So when your house is built on a solid rock, no matter what comes, the winds, the rain, the whatever, it will stand because it's built on a rock. But they that don't do the word of God when things, when life happens and the winds and the rain comes, their house is built on sand. It will collapse and great will be the fall. Now, when we're dealing with things shaking in our lives, I was just saying, it's like holding gold. You're sifting for gold and you have to shake it to get the gold separated from the rest of the mess. But when you shake it, the gold stays on top. So do the big rocks. So that's what you are able to, to glean from is from what remains. What stays after the shaking? What happens when you're shaking? This is what Psalms 46 says. Psalms 46 says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore will not we fear, though the earth be removed, though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof. There is a river. The streams whereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her. And that right early. The heavens raged. The kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice. The earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Come, behold the works of the Lord. What desolations he has made in the earth. He maketh wars to cease unto the end of the earth. He breaketh the bow and cutteth the spear in sunder. He burneth the chariot in the fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts, excuse me, I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. So no matter how much is shaking right now, shaking, bacon, whatever, no matter how much things are shaking out of place or how many things fall off the shelf, break, and, and, and shatter. No matter how many things disappear, no matter what we lose, no matter what comes against us, how the enemy attacks us, no matter what, the shaking will not shake you. The shaking will not shake you off of your foundation if you are founded on the rock, Jesus Christ. Now, the shaking will shake anybody. That's why you have so many people in insane asylums, because they have been shaken to their core. But God is a refuge. He's a shield. He's a buckler. Listen. With God on your side, no matter what comes, you can stand. Let me share some of these dreams I've had. There have been times I stood where there were water, floods, flying over. I mean, the water would be rushing in so hard, the water would be flying overhead. Not a drop would get on me in the dream. Not a drop. When the Bible says you go through the fire and will not burn, you go through the flood, you will not drown. Whatever you go through, go through does not mean you go to, you fall in, you're buried, you're stuck, it's done, it's over. No, the Bible says you're going through, which means you come out on the other side. Now, no matter what you lose, just like Job, no matter what you lose, no matter what is, is uh, life rips you off of, you will always end up in a better position when God has made the dust settle for you. When God stills the storm, everything will be cleaner, fresher, newer. Now, 
Remember that God is on your side. Remember if your pet gets sick, if your family gets sick, if something, if your job is lost, if your money's funny, if your change is strange, the bottom line is God will supply all your needs according to his riches and glory. You have no need to fear. I don't care how much the earth shakes. I don't care how much, how much the, the rumbling goes on, how much noise the enemy makes. Ah! No, he can roar all he wants. Okay? You got God on your side. And with God on your side, if God be for you, who can be against you? Sometimes we don't realize what an advocate we have with the Father. We don't always get what is really happening. But when the Bible says in Romans, I think it's Romans 8, all things work together for the good of those that are called according to his purpose. Those that love God and are called according to his purpose. Whatever happens, when I was in the hospital two years ago, it was working out for my good. Satan might have tried to take me out, but when God said no, Satan could not. That's the bottom line. Sometimes you have to get a word from God. I remember when I was in the hospital, um, I had been on um, ICU. I was in ICU for 12 days. Now listen to this. After the fact, and when I went to go to the doctor for a follow-up, he told me they really thought I wasn't going to make it. But I said to myself, by God. <laughs> so listen, when I was in the hospital, I called a friend of mine because I had to go. I didn't have a Bible or anything. And uh, the friend of mine uh, I asked her, I said, you have your Bible nearby? And she said, yeah. I said, okay, I asked the Lord a question. And I want to see what scripture he gives me. So she got her Bible. And the question I had asked the Lord, I didn't tell her. But the question I had asked the Lord was, Lord, should I get my papers in order so you can tell me who to give my house to? You know, they'll have to continue the payments, but tell me who to bless the house to if this is it, if I'm not going to go home and, uh, or if this is the beginning of the end that, you know, I'm not, you know, I'm practical. I ask those kind of questions. So when I ask the Lord that, and again, where am I leaning? I'm leaning on the Lord, not on the doctors. So I asked the Lord to pick the staff that took care of me and to give them all the right ways to treat what I had. Now, this is what happened. When I asked my friend to get her Bible, I believe it was Psalms 18 that came to my mind. See, that's why we need the word, because the word will carry us through. She pulls the Bible out, and I said, can you read Psalms 18? Now remember, I'm asking God if I'm getting ready to die. Remember that. She opens the Bible. She She's reading. She just, I said, just keep reading until you get to it. She reads. I don't know what she was going to get to, but she's reading and reading and reading. And then she gets to this sentence, and I knew I got my answer. And it was two sentences, a few verses apart. One said, I shall not die, but live to declare the works of the Lord. Number two said, not verse two, this is the second verse as she read further on, said, for the Lord has chastened me sore, but has not given me over unto death. Now you can't get more plain than that. So guess what? I wasn't shaken. God may have been shaking things up, but I wasn't shaken. I was perfectly at peace the whole time. 
even the ride in the paramedics, my first ride to a hospital, my first ride to actually stay at a hospital. That was bizarre. And I was not afraid at all. So God will keep you still on the inner man while things are rumbling and shaking and baking all over you. You don't get burnt. You don't get hurt. You don't suffer loss. And whatever loss you do have to encounter, God will restore all that the locusts have eaten. <clears throat> okay. So know, know this. God is for you. I don't care who comes against you on your job. God is for you. So that doesn't count. That's not even worthy of a thought. I don't care what family member is coming up against you or has that attitude that you always have to battle. God is for you. No matter what they say, no matter what they think, no matter how they act towards you, God is for you. Sometimes you have to get alone. This is where you're going to the rock. You got to get in your Bible. Lord, tell me what you think about me. Let me tell you this. One time I had a relative that just hurt my feelings to the core. I mean, I cried. I drove home. I cried all the way. Oh, I could barely see for the tears. And this is what I was praying. God, how could she come against me like that? Oh, she's just attacking me. I don't know. How could I just believe in Jesus? Why does she have to come at me? I mean, you talk about, ah, I felt like I was cut to shreds when I got to the house. Now, this is what God said to me. He, as I'm praying and crying, he put Psalm 7 in my mind. I'm showing you how God girds you while you're going through. Listen to this. Oh, Lord, my God, in thee do I put my trust. Save me from all them that persecute me and deliver me. Lest he tear my soul like a lion, rending it in pieces while there is none to deliver. I mean, I am telling you, God will not only comfort you, but while you're going through, you are human. He deals with your human element. And he ministers to that part of you. And when you're afraid, he'll give you a fear not. When you're shaking, he'll give you a be still. <laughs> when you feel like they're all against you, he'll give you God is for you. God knows how to stabilize you, how to settle you down. You are never in a trial alone, never, ever alone. You may feel alone, but you're never alone. You may feel like nobody else understands you, nobody else gets you. They all think you're a weirdo, a queerdo, a knucklehead, a, a woo! But God knows everything thing about you. He knows you better than you know yourself. He knows what it's going to take to get you from here to here in spiritual stature. He knows what it's going to take to get you from there to there in progress. He knows what it's going to take. He knows the trials he must allow to happen in your life to shake things in place. You ever get a, uh, those little Chinese checkers, a little Chinese checkerboard that has the little dips or the holes and you shake and the balls roll around and just to play with it to see how many balls you can get to fall into the hole, how many balls you can get in, a, in place. Well, when God shakes us up, he's putting things in place, but he's not guessing. He's supernaturally placing, maneuvering, orchestrating designing, planning, managing. He knows what he's doing. For I know the plans I have for you. And I know just what you're going through. So when you can't see what you're going through, 
And you just can't see the way, no matter what is. I know the plans I have for you. I messed that up, but you get the point. <laughs> to give you hope for your future. God says, I know the plans for you. Plans to bless you, not harm you. Whatever's going on, God is not trying to harm you. He's trying to give you a future and an expected end, a hope and a future. He knows the plans. He knows what it's going to take to make you the person he created you to be in the first place. He knows how to get you through all the contaminants to get you to the goal. He knows how to get you to your point where he can use you for the glory of God. Mm. And sometimes it takes some booty whoopings from life to get there. But always know that the Father only chastens those he loves. Whatever is shaken, he's going to get away the dross. He's going to dry it up, burn it up, and toss it in the sea of forgetfulness. Why? Because flesh cannot go where glory goes. So he has to strip us of our flesh he has to strip us of our tendencies, of our weaknesses, of the lusts of the flesh, of the mindset, the sinful mindset that comes with the flesh, our attitudes. He has to strip us. Mm. Always remember, greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. Greater is he that's in you than you. Greater is he that's in you than the enemy, than the problems, the trials, the setbacks, your failures. God is greater. He's greater than all that. Whatever you're facing, you can hold your head up. When you walk through the storm, hold your head up high. And don't be afraid of the dark. At the end of the storm is a golden sky and the sweet silver song of a lark. Walk on through the wind. Walk on through the rain, though your dreams be tossed and blown. Walk on, walk on, with hope in your heart, and you'll never walk alone. You'll never walk alone. You're not alone. You've got the greatest advocate you could have. You have God's love. You have God's attention. You have God's favor. He's a very present help in times of need, in times of trouble, in times of struggle, in times of trial, in times of heartache, in times of loss. He's a very present help in times of death in times of mourning, in times of sickness. He's a very present help. In times of sorrow. <sighs> know in whom you have believed. Know him. In the power of his resurrection and be acquainted with the suffering. Because this life brings all of that. And God will gird you up to handle every bit of it. And you will not fold. You will not falter. You will not cave in. You will not die. But you will go through. Because you're founded on a rock. Solid ground. 
you will go through. And when you come out on the other side, the glory that is to be revealed, and I'm not just talking about heaven, I'm talking about right here in the land of the living. The glory will be worth it all. When I look at this house, I look at my living room, I look at my kitchen, I look at, at the fact that I actually own property on $850-something a month income. I own property. Only God can do something crazy like that. The foreclosure didn't destroy us. The foreclosure was a setup. It felt like a setback, baby, and I mean way back. But it was a setup for this. <sighs> His glory will be revealed when the dust settles. God's purpose will shine bright. And you'll be able to cock your eyes to the side and say, uh-huh, yes, yeah, Satan, how you like me now? I'm with my daddy, and you couldn't touch this. Hmm, that's right. Because God is for you. God is for you, not against you. He's for you. He understands you. He's with you. You're not alone. I hope that encourages you. Well, folks, it's been real. God bless you. And remember, run to God with all of your tears and sorrows. Because God is able, more than able, to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that you could ask or think according to the power that works in us. God bless you.